This video is brought to you by Big Bad Toy Store. Make your purchases through my personal link in the description to help out the channel. Furthermore, if you want to support me more directly, you can check out my YouTube channel membership for fun emojis and sneak peeks, or my Patreon. Links in the description. So it's been a bit quiet on the upload front recently, and that's because I've been looking for this beauty here. So this is my pile of loot from Big Bad Toy Store, and uh, it's, I think it's like four months of accumulated things, and uh, I can't wait to get it open. A lot of more videos should be coming out a lot more frequently because a lot of things I want to fix up are are in this box. So um, aside from that, I also got this head today. This is the Gambit head from the new three packs. I was gonna swap it with my current Gambit, who actually isn't that bad looking, but the other head is just better. So, so here we go. And that just looks phenomenal. I might have to drill it out a little bit to make it a little bit lower, but still, this head sculpt is fantastic. I also need to clean up this line here for his, like, head sock thing, but otherwise, wow, this head sculpt. Really, really good job, Hasbro. So, let's dive into this box. So, there's a lot of things here, probably for about eight, nine hundred dollars. The import fees alone were like over $200, so that's done a little bit. But yeah, let's take a look. Get rid of all the plastic. Okay, so starting off at the top, we have the new animated retro card Apocalypse figure. And this is because I already have an Apocalypse figure, a custom one that I quite like, but I love this animated look for Apocalypse. It's got like this nice 90s, kind of campy, like purple and blue color scheme, but I just really, really love how he looks. And I'm probably gonna put up the other one on eBay, but yeah. God, this figure looks so cool. But this head sculpt is really, really cool. And um, yeah, this figure, mm, it looks great. So, so from that we have Lady J from also the Retro Carded Wave. And that's because the G.I. Joe classified figures are such good fodder, especially because I've been on a Resident Evil kick recently. And uh, yeah. They just kind of make perfect fodder. So here's Wicket. I actually have a Wicket figure here. It's the one of the original, like, uh, three and three quarter inches. This will be my primary Wicket for the shelf, and that will be his son from uh, The Rise of Skywalker, I guess. Really, really good looking figure. Quite a bit of a robbery, though. I think this figure was, like, close to 30 bucks, and that's just ridiculous because there's not like ugh. expensive expensive hobby so we have the flashpoint batman and uh this is pure fodder he's got some cool little pouches here i can use for things and he's got these double jointed arms i was planning to use for my arkham uh, city batman and uh yeah we'll see how that works out because I really wanted to give him double-jointed elbows. Next up, we have the Valiverse blowback figure. And um, I bought this because it was the last one they had. And he kind of has like a clean army man sort of type of look. And uh, I also thought it would maybe be a good base for a Chris Redfield custom. But I don't know. I, I may have a better base contender in here. And um, I'll let you know when I get to him. So here we have... This is a strangely animated looking box art for this character, but this is the cover girl. G.I. Joe classified figure, she looks beautiful. Will once again probably just be fodder, but you can never go wrong with too many cool new female figures. Here we have the Studio Series Transformers The Last Night Crosshairs figure, and this is by far the worst movie they've ever made about Transformers. It's Utterly, utterly terrible, but actually quite like Age of Extinction. I genuinely feel like it's one of the better movies in the entire live-action franchise. Um, I actually liked it more than Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beasts was kind of... It was kind of mid, I thought. Primal was really cool, but other than that, it was a bit of a disappointment. But yeah, Crosshairs. All I need now is a Studio Series Hound to really wrap up that crew. So next up we have the Legend of Vox Machina. I can see a lot of the boxes here. So so I quite like good Dungeons and & Dragons and um, occasionally I do listen to Critical Role and um, especially the animated series is very good as well if you don't want to sit through the live show. So um, this is Percy and uh, here we have Keyleth. And this is actually the figure I was looking forward to the most because I just think she looks really, really cute. And I figure together they would all look really good. Like, 
just as like a little party. They're missing a couple of party members though, unfortunately, but we'll, I don't know, maybe McFarlane will give us more. This is still during the era where McFarlane had these annoying side eyes. So maybe I will try to fix this, but um, the Vex looks really good too. And uh, there should be one more from this group, shouldn't there? Yeah, here we go. Here's Vax, her brother, and he looks really, really good. Moving down, we have the ultimate Robocop. I used to have a Robocop already, but it was kind of like an older release, and he didn't have this neat little paint job where it like kind of shimmers in different, like a purple. And uh, I just wanted to have like... I don't actually have too much of an affinity for Robocop as a character, but I always like the design, and he is like a staple when it comes to 80s action. And uh, I do love the movie. The movie is genuinely fantastic, but I didn't watch it until I was quite a bit older. I, I watched like the beginning when I was a kid and I was kind of traumatized when Murphy gets like obliterated in the beginning. And uh, th that's like my biggest impression of Robocop. But yeah, this figure looks really, really good. So we have more G.I. Joe fodder. This is Flint. And uh, I was kind of thinking he would be a good base for a Code Veronica Wesker. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say about him. Here we have a um, McFarlane Riddler, and I've been waiting for this figure for a long time because I wanted to see one if my custom head fits on this body and I wanted to repaint the eyes. And I also just really, really like this design for Riddler. Uh, I can already see this cane is horribly bent in the box, but I'll see what I can do with this figure. I think he has the potential to look fantastic when I finish him. Next up is uh, we have Afra from the Star Wars Black series. Mainly, I wanted this figure because I thought the head sculpt looked really good and she might be good fodder. But also I hear apparently she's a really good character in the comics. So before I butcher her, I might look up some comics and just see if I like the character. Because the original figure is apparently really hard to get a hold of. Next up we have G.I. Joe Classified Rock and Roll. So this is my uh, kind of where I'm leaning uh, for a Chris Redfield base. He has like the bulkier arms and... I think the color scheme kind of works. Um, we'll see. I'm not really sure, but he's definitely a contender for it. Here we have um, Falcon, again from G.I. Joe Classified. And I was planning on using him as like a kind of big boss type of base, but he has a pretty skinny like midsection. I'm not really sure about that, but regardless, he will probably also make good fodder. Again, G.I. Joe Classified is the best fodder action figure line of all time. So here's another Batman who just looks really, really cool. It's from Dark Knight's Metal. I uh, might use him again to mod my Arkham City Batman. Just like a really solid design though. The head is really cool looking and I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do with him. So here we have the Insomniac Spider-Man and I know this figure is like a bit of a cop out because there's no like sculpted webbing or anything but I, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get any better than this so I wanted to replace my um, shrunk down Marvel Select figure for like a decent amount of time and I think this figure will look fine just kind of standing there. It's unfortunate but I think visually it looks pretty decent so yeah we'll see. Here we have Stellan Skarsgård's character from Andor, Luthan Rail. Andor was a, was a show that kind of surprised me in that it was just quality all the way through. Fantastic acting and everything was just great. It had a fantastic speech by Andy Serkis in one episode and then I didn't think anyone would top that and then Stellan Skarsgård comes in in like a couple of episodes afterwards and just blows me away with another speech. And fantastic character and this likeness. It's just incredible. I love what Hasper is doing currently with the likenesses. So here we have, uh, I don't know this character actually, Monet St. Crow. And um, I honestly just kind of got her because I figured if I for some reason ever would make a Symmetra custom from Overwatch, I think she would be a pretty good head base. So that's honestly the only reason why I really got her. But good again, good looking female figure and you can't really get, get enough of those. So here is the um, Figure Rice Toy Story 4 Woody model kit. And uh, that's because I'm trying to sell my Reveltech Woody and Buzz because I kind of, I don't know, I just really like look of these and um, I'm looking forward to building this and we're kind of reaching the end of our rope here but 
here we have the G.I. Joe Snake Eyes and Timber set. And this is the variant where Timber is white. And there are some differences with Snake Eyes too. Again, this is like all fodder. The wolf will make a good display piece. And, um, and also to complete this, we have the original two pack as well. Again, a lot of really, really good fodder parts here I see. And then just a straight up normal looking wolf. That's just fantastic for like photos and stuff. Yeah. And uh, finally, we have we have the Mandalorian Bo-Katan figure. And after watching Mandalorian Season 3, I just started to really enjoy Bo-Katan's character. So I figured why not pick it up? I'm sure they will inevitably give her another figure with updated hair and a new shoulder pad. But I don't know, this, this figure will do in a pinch. So that is my um, Big Bad Toy Store haul. So now you have an idea of what's coming up in the future. So I hope you like this little unboxing video and uh, I'll see you guys in a bit.